Our next guest is an Academy Award and Grammy winner, a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee, and former frontman of Talking Heads. His Tony Award-winning Broadway show, American Utopia, is running through April at the St. James Theater. Please welcome back to the show our friend, David Byrne. Hello, David. How are you? Hi, Seth. Hi, Seth. So, great to be back. It's great to have you back. A surreal time uh, to be doing a Broadway show these last two years, especially these last few weeks. I know that you had an outbreak at the show. You did not have to cancel it, though. You did sort of a modified performance. How did that come about? Wow, yes, yes. We, uh, like a lot of shows, we had like a couple of people who tested positive and had to go out, and they were covered by understudies, and then more, and then more, and then more until, Half the cast, half the band was out, and some of the crew as well, and we couldn't do the show anymore. And some of us talked amongst ourselves and said, well, maybe we can do a kind of unplugged kind of thing. We'll do some other songs, some, you know, catalog songs, other, other you know, talking head songs, whatever, and just kind of see if the audience wants to hear that. We won't be doing any of the choreography. We won't be doing this show, but we'll give them something. So that if they come from out of town, as people did over the, over the holidays, we'll have something for them and they can, as I said to, in this little message, I said, you can either get your money back or you can take what's behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine people found that exciting to be able to go to a show and get something more unique than what the normal show was. Yeah, I think audiences really liked it. They, I, they, it was not slick and perfect. Uh, there were times when I had to stop and ask the band, who starts this song? <laughs> and uh, the audience loved that. They would like applaud for stuff like that. Your show, which I saw uh, before the pandemic and loved a great deal, it's very optimistic. It's also has a lot of audience engagement. You ask them to get up and dance. Are, are people still engaged with the show? Are people still happy to get up and dance when you, when you demand it of them? They are getting up and dancing even to this kind of unplugged version that we're doing. Uh, so yeah says something about audiences that they really want to be together. They really want to kind of express themselves and dance and have a good time. So, and a shout out to Gustavo over there on the bandstand. Yes, we're very happy. Thank you so much. Hey! Thank you for lending us your drummer. Uh, what are the, uh, you know, the show looks beautiful. And one of the things uh, about it is the, you know, the, the wardrobe is gray suits, uh, also your barefoot. How did you come up with that decision of, of those two elements of, of how the show would look? Uh, little by little, it was very practical. I thought suits would kind of make everyone look sort of attractive and, and we're kind of, well, almost like one size fits all. You can kind of, everybody can look good, decent in a suit, women and men. And uh, then I and just asked the lighting director, I said, what color do you want them? And they said, medium gray, immediately, <laughs> medium gray. And I thought, oh, okay. That was so that when we, if they put light on us, we'll, we can be seen. And if they take the light away, we can disappear. If we go kind of uh, upstage into the darkness, we'll disappear. If we were wearing a white suit, which I lo love to wear sometimes, uh, it would be really hard to have me kind of disappear. So it was purely practical. <laughs> and you the bare feet, the bare feet, uh, I mean, once you're in a business suit, I thought, we're not going to wear business shoes. That's, that's going a little too far. Yeah, you're, you, you know, you're still a rock and roller. You can't be wearing a suit <laughs> yeah. and shoes. Yes. <laughs> By the way, uh, if, uh, I was thinking about the Florida man. Yeah. And I, rem I remember that uh, when they apprehended him, they asked him, what is this? And he said, it's not mine. <laughs> that's the, that's, I don't know where the story went after that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I feel like that's every drug user's first response to the cops is it's not mine. Yes. Um, you, uh, uh, there's a wonderful uh, film of the concert, uh, of the show, I should say, on HBO Max that Spike Lee directed. Um, you obviously, both of you have had a, a long history in New York City. When did you first meet? I think, uh, I'm not sure. I think it might have been uh, when he did, did uh, do the right thing. I remember going to the premiere of that. It was at the Zigfield. It was like, wow, 
this kind of up and coming filmmaker is now has a film at the Ziegfeld and it's an amazing film if people haven't seen it. I met, might have met him then or some other time. Uh, we started crossing paths. We were both kind of com coming up at the same time. You, I think a lot of people sort of romanticize 1970s New York, which is when you first came here, but can you tell those of us who are so upset that we didn't get to live in New York City then uh, one, at least one thing about it that was worse? I can tell you a lot of things that are worse. Um, there, was, there was this law that got passed in New York sometime after that. It was called the Pooper Scooper Law. And for those of people who don't remember or weren't around, they used to let dogs, well, poop right on the sidewalk, and the owner would just walk on. Like, uh, okay, uh, that's a, you're done your business, we're just moving on. So if you're walking around in New York, you had to be looking down all the time. <laughs> uh, and inevitably, even though you're trying to be really careful, you'd get some on you, and you'd be there on the curb or on the grass or somewhere trying to scrape it off your shoes. And that's not romantic. There's yeah. nothing there's, there's nothing good about that. No. And then if somebody walked by while you were doing it, you would say, it's not mine, right? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who put that there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you also you have a, a, a book of, uh, of your artwork uh, coming out soon. This is a beautiful drawing. Is this all uh, art you did during uh, the <laughs> pandemic, or is this uh, sort of predating? It's all during the pandemic. Uh, as I think happened to a lot of people during the pandemic, we were sometimes prohibited from doing the things that we normally do, either going to work or going to doing concerts or whatever it might be. And some of us took up cooking or making bread and I started drawing. And to some extent, I think the drawings kind of reflected the turmoil, turmoil that was going through, going through not just my head, but I assume other people's heads too. Uh, well, it's really beautiful, and I look forward to seeing the book, and, and I also look forward to coming back and seeing the show again. Uh, thank you so much for being here, David. Thank you. Good to see you again. David Byrne, everybody. American Utopia is running through April at the St. James Theater and streaming on HBO Max.